climate change and development both go hand in hand. If India has to become a developed country, should it use more clean energy? What should be its negotiating position in the huge conference which will happen in Paris in a few months? I have with me Professor Lawrence Tubiana, who's the key person for this conference in Paris. Professor Lawrence, you've been in India for several days. You've spoken to some of the key players in the area of climate change and environment. What, what have you learned till now and what is India's position? <clears throat> what I learn is that uh, both at domestic level, uh, India is really engaged. Your Prime Minister has really launched an enormous effort to change the energy policy, in particular with this massive program for renewable energy that comes even from its Gujarat experience, which I know from before. I see as well uh, a huge commitment on the future, looking at the future of, of India as a development that is clean, meaning much more access to energy for the ones who doesn't have access, but with a very huge focus on we have to get this energy clean. No and much, much and less local pollution, really the connection between health and, and energy and clean energy all this creating, I think, a different posture for India, thinking that fighting, combating climate change and developing, is, it can be hand in hand. I think that's the first time I have... India is not fighting climate change. See, we don't even have electricity to 300 million no, people. But, but, but you, where, where, where are we talking of India fighting climate? I, India is not a contributor to changing no, climate. No, but you can show that in a country that is so keen on making his people well off and developed, develop and, and really on this key issue about health, sanitation and energy, you have a very progressive uh, future understanding. So that's why I think in this negotiation, India can really have a, a very real leadership role. Why? Saying, and what is already there, that India can show for most developing countries a pathway, a direction that is a different way of developing, both on the source of energy, the way to think the development, and at the same time, something we discuss today and these days with many of, of yours, that the lifestyle is something very important. How you promote a lifestyle that is compatible with nature? I think that's a very deep dimension. But Indians, like. by and large, are very compatible with nature. The Prime Minister himself yeah. has said that very often. That it's, it's, really, it's really countries of the West. Look at, look at the per capita consumption uh, emissions of carbon from America, 10 times more than India. That's look at France. France has done a great job with using nuclear energy, so it's just five times. But Indian per capita, per capita emission of carbon is, is so low and we still need to take it so far away. I think nobody How? contests that, at the contrary. We know that uh, consumption of energy in India has to go. That's for sure. It's needed. You can't, people that doesn't have access to electricity has to have. And I think that's a big uh, achievement that has to be deployed. And at the same time, I think, uh, it's not my idea, but the, many of my in Indian interlocutors spoke about how we got a sustainable lifestyle and how can India show the way that you can be better off, again basic needs uh, fulfilled with a sustainable lifestyle and I think that's good that the way India can show, can have leadership in the, in the way making Western countries think back of how they live which is not sustainable at that oh, time. You're, you're saying should the debate shift now to sustainable consumption? I India would, would be very happy about that. I think yes. And I think, for example, on the food model, on the food consumption model, uh, the idea that this overconsumption of meat is really killing many things. Too much land use, for deforestation, uh, methane emission, etc. And I think that I see the movement now, even if these negotiations are not about food. But I see that now, every time, there, there are campaigns to say on the countries that where the big meat consumer says you should stop that at least try one day without meat you will so, not so die would, it, would at Paris 
would the Paris Convention be willing to tell America to cut down its com consumption or Western, uh, Western Europe, Eastern Europe to cut down consumption? I think uh, in this process, you don't dictate anybody to do anything. So you have to bring people to believe that it's a better way to go. Uh, nobody will dictate, dictate India development model. You have to, to make the choice. You have to do the job. Uh, on the other, but we can reflect together. We ha can have a collective discussion on what is really suitable for the whole com international community. So we will not dictate U.S. Con consumption model, but we can make U.S., which is already there, and in Europe at least I see the transformation. You, we can make people think twice. Do they need so many things? Do they need uh, this overconsumption and to have so much waste? We have now in, in France a, a campaign and in some other European countries against all this food waste, which is terrible. Sometimes 20 or 30 percent of food waste. That's, that's totally crazy. And I think that's where you can have, of course, a technological leadership from India on some elements, a political leadership, and you can have some like uh, intellectual and uh, spiritual leadership on this aspect. And I think people are ready to listen to that message. In, in, in India, there is a feeling that this whole debate of climate change is really another dimension of trade and business opportunity is being opened up by the West, essentially to make money again by transferring technology from India. To India, sorry. You, you can always have different readings of a, of a problem, a reality, and, and, and we can't ignore that there are economic forces at stake there. Uh, but that's why I think the value of this process is that now it's about discussion, domestic discussion, domestic decisions. It's really, um, that's the beauty. Before it was, you have, you have to do this or to do that. You have to comply with this or comply with that. And now is, what is your choice? Just tell us. And everyone share the choices. And uh, I think you have, Indian businesses have to find their way through in this system. Your renewable energy policy has to imply that Indian business deliver as well. And uh, I don't think that it is business for somebody else. Mainly, it will be, again, this is a change in the process. That would be about decision of investment in India. If there is international capital that can help, even better. If there is technology that can be shared, I think that would be a big sort of a demand on your country. And uh, that's fair. You know, the issue is about financing. So can India expect low capital financing or of free technology transfer? Because if the, if the carbon cake was used by, for development by the West, why should India pay a price today? I think uh, you, you mentioned the importance of, in particular for this sector where the investment is capital is high. In, and in clean energy is particularly the case. Operational, operation costs are low, capit, initial capital costs are high. So getting, having access to cheap capital is essential and was very much a part of the discussion I had along these three days. How we, get, how we can get businesses, banks in India having access to this cheap capital. With cheap capital, all the investment program of India can be fulfilled. So that should be a result of Paris. So do you think after Paris there, is, there will be some cheap financing available for India to go the low carbon route? We are already very low in India. Um, yes, of course. But uh, what you want, I understand, is to really get access to this energy for many, many more people. So increase the energy consumption and not to go to the dirty one because it implies local pollution. Um, and if you have dirty coal, it <coughs> has a huge impact on health and you have always, already a uh, high level of pollution in some cities of India. So it's very important to get the clean solution. <coughs> I think all this discussion about the financial package of Paris is about how you get the investment at low cost. So that is the way we should reorient the financial system to deliver this. Nowadays, and I was commenting that with many Indian colleagues, uh, the investors pay a high price to get capital here in this country because of the very high risk on exchange rate, which is too high. 
So you get interest rate at plus 10% when you have to make an investment where it should be affordable if you pay 1 or 2% of interest rate. That the financial package has to deliver in Paris. So it's a very concrete element. It's not giving everything for free, that doesn't exist. But yes, allowing the investment to take place and the, and the investment being profitable for any investors and in particular Indian investors that would do the job. You have a big program on renewable energy for the next 10 years but you have to find the capital to fund it. And of course, the cooperation in technology, which I think, but I, I think... Many think that's India only, that's be. only, that's only posturing by India. 100,000 megawatts, that figure is, is never going to be reached. Yes, do I, you don't, have, do I you don't have know. A, you don't think? You don't I'm see? asking you, man. I, I think, why not? Uh, first, <clears throat> even if I'm coming from a country who doesn't have that high level of renewable energy, we are under 50, around 15% now of our own electricity. Uh, I see in many countries, not only India, a big push. Uh, China has done enormous investment. You are doing enormous investment. This will change the, the picture, the landscape of renewable energy. I'm confident that we will resolve the electric storage very soon. I'm confident that in maybe 10 years time we will have really technology for the transmission much cheaper and much better. Of course, if we don't have that, the renewable programs are impossible. So there is really an issue about innovation and knowledge. But you know, as a professor, I believe in knowledge and I believe in research. So. Yeah, but, but as a person who communicates to the lay people, what do I tell people in India? The sun has gone down, so we can't give you electricity, or the wind is not blowing, so we don't give you electricity. So the renewable route is more romantic than real. Well, when in particular, in this first phase where still you have low consumption of electricity, still you can use at least solar and wind for small level. What is difficult is when you have very concentrated area of population with very high industrial consumption, what you need because you are in a very speed phase of industrialization. This command may be different solutions, but you have still uh, a, a lot of coal and a lot of power plants and I understand the building of the power plants is, is going rapidly up. So the, the issue for, for India is really to get access to clean coal technology. That is important. For a long time, if I understand correctly, coal will be king in India. I, Next I understand so. I have understood in these three days that uh, a good cooperation effort about providing clean coal technology in India is key for, for the global world. So, so what, what is the expectation from India at the Paris conference? You've met the key players now. I think, one, India is a big power, politically, internationally. So any agreement has to have India on board and be, in a way, an agreement that supports the development that India has chosen. And it's clean development. So I don't see a contradiction at the contrary. I see really a, a convergence on trying to, to draft, to, to craft an agreement that India would feel not only comfortable with, but to support the strategy you have. Because why? Because I think, additionally, it's a sort of a model for many other smaller developing countries that more or less face the same problems. Africa, with a lot of people who doesn't have access to energy, and in many cases in very areas, poor and deprived area. If you find a solution here, that would be a powerful support for them. So and I know you have a lot of cooperation, by the way, already. We, we, have, we have a lot of effort on clean energy, solar energy. So can you keep your hand on your heart and say that at the Paris Climate Change Conference, the way negotiations go, India will not feel cheated, that its development has been stemmed? I don't believe so. I believe India will be one of the key players to define what the agreement is. I'm confident you have very good diplomats, you have very good of, uh, uh, ministers, and you have a prime minister who is very vocal. So I'm not anxious about India, frankly, or the contrary. What we need, we need leadership to have an agreement that combine or see that climate change has to go hand in hand with development. We have to be much better on adaptation on climate change. Anyway, what whatever happens in Paris on the mitigation side, we have to improve enormously the technology of adaptation. It's about irrigation. 
is about land degradation, restoration. It's about many elements, health, uh, how you deal with heat waves, how you deal with extreme events and floods. So that, I think, as well, this agreement is no more on mitigation only, on the reduction of emission, on whatever clean energy. It's very much as well on food security, on water management, which really be the, fl the floods you have. Many countries are suffering from this. We have to know how we manage that. How do you explain to a person on the street in India? See, 300 million don't have elect access to electricity. There's a large portion which gets free electricity. There's another large portion which steals electricity. How do you explain to them that the cost of electricity will go higher because you need to save the planet? How will you explain to them that there is a need for clean energy? I think the problem of the cost of electricity is totally different from the, the things that Europe has to do and hear what people and the government has to do. And, and you are making your own choices on what price should be the electricity cost. Uh, and I think the message to the Indian citizen is how this system allow your country to provide you support. It will be, of course, again, domestic efforts and domestic decisions. But how this system helps you go faster to, do, to give this electricity to the people you don't have and to do it in a cleaner way where you don't face all this pollution problem we have been living in many, many years in many countries that have gone the dirty one. So it's about really combining the two. And, and now I think we, you, you may think that the renewable program is far too optimistic, but that's a major uh, source of innovation. It's a major source of, of well-being if we can get this. India, India wants to go the nuclear route, but the technology is too expensive and the, even France and America both are charging too much for nuclear reactors. How, how do you get clean energy if you can't get cheap reactors? Nuclear, anyway, is a, will be a, a source for India like for other countries. For the moment, we can't imagine to have a cheap nuclear including because it's a very sophisticated industrial thing, um, technique, and it's, you have to be very concerned with safety. So I don't see a future of a very cheap nuclear energy, but it can play a role, in particular in big areas where you have a very densely population uh, for the industry. You may need that as well. So it's part of the mix, but you, you can't have and even in France, where has, we have a lot of electricity out of nuclear, but many, most of our energy consumption is out of fuel. And that's the what we have to correct, no? Go for biogas or biofuel for, for cars, go for electric vehicles. That's the way we have to go in our country. Climate change negotiations are such messy affairs. You've been a career professor and academic. Why, why did you why did you get into this messy affair? I think uh, you know sometime in life you feel you can help a little bit on a big problem. I can try. I may fail. But if you just keep in your office writing books, teaching your students which I love to do and when evidently there is some action that you could be useful at uh, giving trust to the people you are negotiating with uh, and many people I know them for many years uh, then you should try even if I would be very happy to go back to my university hereafter. <laughs> A lot is said about these oil and gas companies they are very powerful and they are crude they, are, they, are, they, are, they do so many things do you ever fear for your life in a situation <laughs> like this, that, that if you reach a negotiation and they don't like it, what will happen? Uh, I haven't thought about that. We'll see. I've been spied. That's true, my telephone and the... Uh, and, uh, no, but I don't, I don't feel in a danger. I, 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 would, I would love that this climate negotiation uh, feels so much pressure on some companies, but that's, I, I don't think that's okay. Anyway, I will be careful now. <laughs> but but you said you, your phones were tapped or you were spied upon. So what were they looking for from you? Mm, no, say, I don't know. They, they think that in this climate negotiation there is secret information. I can tell you, nothing is secret. Everything is leaked. So there is no need to spy. And, 
And what else can you tell the Indian people that which, which should make them feel confident that, that Paris will not be what Copenhagen was and that Indians should engage very strongly in Paris? One, I think, and I know is that India has always been very forceful in wanting the agreements to include every country. So that's a philosophy of India at international level, not having some countries deciding for others. And this ne negotiation, even if it's uh, really lengthy, complicated, everyone is there. So that's one. Second, because we learn from Copenhagen, we really try to have a process very, very transparent, very inclusive, where everyone knows everything, so there is no paranoia in it. And that, I think, even if it's lengthy, and uh, I think we can draft together all the 196 countries together, something simple, but can really shift the paradigm of this international cooperation on climate. Shift from uh, a feeling that countries would be under constraint, under pressure, to something that is facilitative, that is supporting their development pathway. I think that is a change I would like to see in Paris, with, additionally, uh, the local authorities, the mayors, the governors or of some states. Uh, we talk about Gujarat with a with a resident commissioner here in Delhi, uh, mayors of cities, businesses, civil society. We have to engage everybody. Everybody has to bring something. Uh, the consciousness that we have to protect forests and biodiversity at the same time, and that you have to have not only the big technologies, the modern one, but at least the, the, the small technologies, the innovation of the people. That has to be present in Paris in my view. See, the Indian Prime Minister is a rare person who's written a book on climate change. Al Gore wrote Inconvenient Truth. The Indian Prime Minister wrote a book called Convenient yes, Action. Yes, exactly. Now, is there one message, you were not able to meet the Prime Minister, is there one message you want to give to the Prime Minister on camera on what, should, what, what is your expectation? I can give a message to him. Uh, I would be very grateful if he could help us to achieve a successful agreement in Paris. We need his leadership because he, he, he can show the way. He had done this in his state. He, will, he is doing it for India and India can then serve as a model uh, on, around which we can really reorient the conversation. So we need Prime Minister Modi to lead the discussion. So that was Professor Lawrence Tobiana who's going to play a key role in the negotiations at the Climate Change Conference in Paris in a few months, telling us that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership is very important and India's role in the negotiations would play a very important role. Pleasure talking to you, madam. And Thank let's you. see how it goes in Paris. Maybe we'll and meet in Paris. Don't forget to send my message to Prime Minister Modi. We, we need will him. do that. Okay. We will do that. We will definitely do that. No, that's good.